Hi there, welcome to Nappy Invest. Currently I have a mission to do a video on every single company that achieves a positive operational cash flow June quarter. However, um, there is a bit of a downside to this mission and that means I'm going to have to do videos on companies I really don't want to do a video on. And that is especially true for today's or the two companies I'll be featuring in today's video. Those two companies are Global Health and ASF. The reason I'm not really excited about doing videos on these two companies is a little bit different. For Global Health, this is a company I've been covering or following for about eight years. Uh, originally, they didn't have to do Appendix 4Cs, and then all of a sudden, I think the ASX told them, please give us uh, how you're doing every quarter, so issue Appendix 4Cs. And this is a company that really isn't gaining any traction in their business. ASF is a little bit different. I wouldn't be able to tell you what they do. Um, and the whole market probably wouldn't tell you what they do because there's very little liquidity within ASF. And the only reason they were operational cash flow positive for the June quarter was because of government rebates and tax incentives or something like that. And I maybe should have made as a part of my mission that if you do get government rebates, that sort of thing, that's not really uh, money you get because of operations. So I should have excluded these sort of companies. But I made the promise to do a video on every single company that achieved operational cash flow positive and unfortunately ASF did that. So let's have a look at the first company, which is Global Health. Global Health is a healthcare software company with a ticket code GLH. They connect clinicians and consumers through the secure exchange of patient information between health providers. Market cap $24 million, uh, revenue $6.3 million, and not really growing at all over the past eight years. But the one positive thing about this company is they are operational cash flow positive by $1.1 million. So now I'm just going to show you the June quarter appendix 4C to see if there's anything exciting there. And then I'll show you the financial history. And when we look at the financial history, that hopefully that's a little bit clearer why I'm not too excited about this company. And then we'll have a look at the chart and see if the market is excited about this company. So just because I'm not excited doesn't mean the market can't be excited. So let's have a look at the June quarter appendix 4C right now. Receipts from customers for the June quarter for Global Health were $2 million. And because this was the final quarter of the financial year, we do know receipts and customers over the whole financial year was just under $8 million. Now, the positive thing, and the only positive thing in my mind because of Global Health, is the fact they are operational cash flow positive, not only in the current quarter, but also through the whole financial year. So $286,000 in the June quarter and $1.4 million for the financial year. The other thing you'll notice is they actually grew their cash on hand in the business from $1.1 million to $4.8 million. And that's because of a capital raising. So even though they are operational cash flow positive, they are still doing capital raisings to bring money into the business. And I'd say the most important thing for management is what they do with that capital raising. They now have a little bit of flexibility with $5 million of cash to maybe do some acquisitions, maybe research and development, maybe something else to grow this business in the future. Because Global Health has just started doing Appendix 4Cs, we don't have any data to put in a nice little a graph that I usually do. So I referred to ticker.com to get the half yearly revenue and cash flow from operations um, through the last 10 years or so. And the main thing you see here is a very slow increase in revenue. There is a bit of an increase, but it's very slowly happening. So it's gone from $1.8 million of revenue uh, 10 years ago to $3.1 million. And when you look at the cash from operations or cash flow from operations, it's fairly lumpy and there's no growth there at all. So that's the main reason I'm not that excited with this company. Hopefully, management can do something with that $5 million to grow revenues in the future and become more operational cash flow positive. And for that reason alone, I've left this on one of my watch lists. So I keep 
an eye on this company whenever they release Appendix 4Cs or half yearly and yearly reports to see if there is any growth in these numbers. But at this point in time, there's no growth at all or very little growth um, at the moment. I'm only going to show you one chart uh, of global health, and that's the weekly chart going back to 2012. The one reason I became interested in this company was because of what happened with the share price during the later period of 2013 into the start of 2014. Share price rose from two cents to a high of 75 cents, and that rise in share price happened over about an eight or nine month period. Not only did we see the share price rise by a significant amount, we also saw the volume increase as well. In fact, when the share price got to its high of 75 cents, that's when we saw a peak in the volume. So the market was becoming excited about this company. At the same time, if my memory serves correct, there was another company where we saw very similar increase in share price. That was Azure Healthcare, AZV. But as the volume decreased, we also saw the share price decreasing, and that was a sign the market interest in this company was waning. And then we just saw the share price decrease from then and get to a low of 10 cents. Uh, so it took about a six year period for the share price to go from 75 cents to a low of 10 cents during the COVID-19 financial panic. But we've seen the share price go under the very similar pattern than what we saw in 2013-14. Share price increased from 10 cents to a high of nearly 80 cents in the start of May. The only difference from now to what we saw in 2014 was a lack of volume right now. Volume, there's been no volume at all driving the share price higher. It's distinctly different than what we saw in 2014. I'm not sure what's been driving the share price higher for global health. It just could be overall positive sentiment in the markets. Now on to ASF, and hopefully this is going to be quite brief because I have zero interest in this company. And I'll go through the reasons why I have zero interest in this company in each slide, including this slide. ASF, TIG code is AFA. I'm not sure why it's not ASF. Maybe the TIG code ASF has already been taken. Mark at $38 million. Revenue, not much at all, $1.7 million. And operational cash flow negative in the training 12 months of $1.2 million. Now, the first reason why I have zero interest in ASF is simply because they use a few buzzwords in their own description of what they do. And I absolutely hate buzzwords like incubation and synergy. And if you need to use buzzwords to describe your company, it's going to be a complete turnoff for me. So ACF is an investment and trading house which focuses principally on the identification, incubation and realization of opportunities in areas of synergy between China, Australia, UK and Europe, including all these different sectors. And even that sort of description of what they do, I still have no idea exactly what this company does. Now on to the uh, June quarter Appendix 4C, and the second reason why I have no interest in this company is because technically this company is not operational cash flow positive. The reason they are is simply because of government grants and tax incentives. We're seeing some customers, 546, so maybe that's a little bit of a good sign. This company is a real business. They are drawing in money from what they're doing. But because they received $830,000 from government grants and tax incentives, that meant they were operational cash flow positive for the quarter. In my opinion, government grants and tax incentives should belong in another section, not the operating activity section, because that money isn't being derived from the operations of the business. And the final reason I have no interest in ASF is when you look at the daily chart, and this is the daily chart for ASF, and it goes all the way back to 2015. Share price was around 34 cents then, but that's not the reason why I have no interest in this company. It's just the fact that there's very little trading happening around this company. I went through the trading history. There are some months where only two or three days there is a bit of trading in this company. So the lack of liquidity uh, is a major concern, and the fact that the share price has been drifting down over the last six years is a massive turnoff as well. So share price drifting down, not a lot of liquidity, no reason to buy into this company at this point in time. 
I may have no interest in ASF, but the next two companies I'll be doing a video on, Megaport and Damstra, is the complete opposite. I do have a fair bit of interest in those two companies. Another video I'll be doing is on Orcoda, and that company is becoming a little bit more interesting to me. And I'll be doing another video on Emerge Gaming. I've had to think about whether it's a good idea to do a video on Emerge Gaming simply because this company is affiliated with a company that is alleged to be just a pyramid scheme, and that is Crowd1. There is a good video from BBC Africa about Crowd1, and for the simple fact that Emerge Gaming is affiliated with this a company called Crowd1 does give me pause about whether I should do a video on this company. I'm not saying management of Emerge Gaming is doing anything wrong, but it's just that simple affiliation I do have a little bit of a problem with. That's it for this video. If you do have any thoughts about these two companies, Global Health and ASF, if you know a little bit more about these two companies, I'd love to hear your opinion. If you think I'm completely wrong about ACF and you think it's one of the best uh, investing ideas on the planet, I'd love to hear your opinion. So leave your opinion in the comment section of this video. And one of the best ways we can grow as investors is to get ideas from other people and try to digest those ideas and not just throw them away as idiotic and stupid. So I'd love to hear uh, differing opinions than my own because that's how I grow as an investor. So I'd love to hear someone who loves ASF. I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.